This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... You know, it was probably a little bit of a mistake to refer to this little demonstration as an anti-war protest. Language should be precise. You know, one of the nicest things anyone ever said about me was when I think somebody posted something in the YouTube comments saying that, uh, that I was precise and free of hyperbole. Probably I sometimes am not. But when I was a conservative back in the 80s and 90s, I used to think people calling themselves anti-war, you know, anti-Vietnam War protesters or whatnot, or opponents of the Vietnam War, I always thought that they were not really anti-war, they were anti-U.S. involvement in a certain war. The well, say you had, say it was the year 1965, and you were an opponent of American involvement in the war. You call yourself anti-Vietnam War. Well, if the Americans had left in 1965, yeah, the war would have eventually ended. But it, when they left in 1974, it took two years for the war to end after that. So, presumably, the war in Vietnam would have continued on after the Americans left there would still have been a war, and 95% of people, probably including me, wouldn't have any, wouldn't take very much interest in it once the Americans were out. So it's the same thing in Afghanistan now, or Syria, as I, you know, hear, but even more in Afghanistan, where the Americans are heavily involved, as soon as the Americans stop being involved, someday they'll leave, well, there'll still be a, an Afghanistan war. And in fact, that war could last another 20 years. That's pretty much what happened when the Soviets left. Uh, fighting continued for another 10 or so years before the Americans went back in. You're not anti-Afghan war. You're anti-American involvement in the Afghan war. Most of you. Peaceniks. Including me. Uh, once the Americans are gone, there may be a relatively good guy faction in Afghanistan fighting a relatively bad guy faction. I'm not sure which any of them would be, but uh, I might, you know, feel relatively supportive of that faction and believe that it needs to continue fighting or its people will be killed. Something along those lines. This is a little bit like how I felt in 2001 when I looked at the Northern Alliance and I looked at the Taliban and I thought, well, the Northern Alliance is not quite as bad. And they weren't. I felt kind of happy when the alliance would score military victories. Eh, look, uh, you know, upon closer uh, inspection, I might, uh, I might not have been quite so sympathetic. But presumably, there is, at least on rare occasions, a time for war. With nation states involved, in a sense, you almost, I, I feel I need to be against every nation state's acts of war, even if they're defensive. But that doesn't mean I have to be against an act of war by somebody like, uh, you know, at least some of the more independent elements of the French resistance in World War II, or maybe some of the things Fekret Abdich did in the Bosnian War. He was sort of a a corporate guy who wound up sort of leading a militia for at least part of the war, they were pretty uh, cautious about using military force, and I think they, they were not funded by any governments. They uh, they held an area called the Bihach Pocket in, I guess it would have been, northwestern Bosnia. That kind of warfare, at least you don't necessarily have a government funding it, so as long as you're not committing any other acts of aggression, then it... it, it History may smile on you, and the non-aggression principle may uh, may cut you loose. Or, uh, well, that's not the right term. The non-aggression principle may not frown on you. Anyway, anti-war doesn't always mean anti-war. It, mean, it may mean something similar but subtly different. Free Keen's evil and not very good. I hate Free Keen as much as I could. Because they have a blog and sometimes hold signs. Drinking water from bottles and fighting government fines. Or maybe it's really because I'm riding a train that has some gravy on it in the taxpayer's name. Freaking.com